Hey, how's it going? And today I'm going to do a quick video on this part two of this flying man. I, it's all basically I call animated sky. So there's a lot I could do with this, but I'm just trying to show you the basics of how to get started. So uh, I already showed in the first video how to get this Mixamo rig. And so I don't know how well this is going to turn out, but I'm just going to, I've got the rig in already. This is actually the jumping jack pose for Mixamo. So you got to look through all the different animations and find the one that, you know, best represents a falling position. Also flying or falling. And I, I found that swimming was a nice one. So here I'm just going to try to give the illusion of him flying through the uh, air. So, and we're going to do that mostly with some animation here. This would work a lot better if this character was animated on a micro level too, but it's, of course, he's just in a static pose, but with the motion and everything, hopefully you won't notice that he's frozen. You could also put this into your post-processing software and add some blur and stuff like that and add a little bit more animation to the body, even though the entire body is locked in position by turning it a little bit and giving it some jitter and stuff like that. So that can all be done later. This is just to show you kind of the basic. So I'm going to have him go from the upper right to the lower left of the screen. And so I have him there and then I'm going to go ahead and drag the playhead all down to 120. So this would just be a really short animation. And then I'm just going to go into texture so I can just see it. You could also add a controller here. So I'm going to, I don't know if I want to tilt him down a little bit here, but then I'll I'm just going to drag him here and let's drag him. Well, I'm trying to drag him down a little bit here. So let's just drag him down like that. And I'm turning the scroll wheel. Maybe I can rotate him here. Hold on. I'm trying to get him to turn to the side a little bit, maybe like that. And can't quite get his body to rotate. So I, I might have to get it out of controller in there. I'm just going to have him go off the screen like that. Okay. So let's uh, see what we got. It's probably horrific. <laughs> okay. So I could, I could speed this up, I think, a little bit better. That's, uh, of course, it's not the greatest animation here. Let me go back to the starting position here and just change him a little bit. Weird, because I can't quite rotate him side to side. And so I could add a controller to try to remedy that. So let's see what this looks like. This. So it's just going to be like something like that. Maybe I should have him come from off screen. So let, let me do that. Let me just pull him off. Oh, it might be cool to have him. Let's see what that looks like. Let me pull him up a little bit. Let's see what that looks like. Not that bad. Like I said, if I could bank him a little bit, that might even be better. And of course, you could speed this up if that's too slow. And I could very well do that in post as well. So you get the idea. Just come up with some sort of animation like that. Now, the, the key part to me in this whole thing, let me just have him in the scene there for a second. Now, let's go back into VPR. Let match our camera perspective. Let go into background here. I did another video on this, and this is one of the things that I, I love about Lightwave. So we're just going to come in here and go to textured environment, turn off the backdrop. We're going to double click this. We're going to click this. We're going to go into procedural. And then uh, right away, we get this nice, just by adding turbulence, kind of a cloudy look. But to make it look more like daytime, we can change the white to uh, blue or like that. I think that's the one I use. No, that looks too too weird. Um, like try that one. Uh, it's kind of a, oh, let's do this one. Sorry. There we go. Oh, wait. Gosh darn it. That, that's the one I think I want. Yeah, that's the one I like. And then you can add, of course, your frequencies. Since we're going to have him going, if he was falling straight down, I might have the, you know, the movement going this way. But then we simply go into position. Make sure I'm on the first axis here. We're going to have it move along the X. And then so we'll go into the envelope here. And let's make this big. And we'll get the keyframe here. And we'll just start with this and see where that gets us. We hit A to kind of center it. And let's see what that looks like. <laughs> you, you get the idea, right? So, and then in post, of course, you could do a lot of things. I could, I wonder 
if it will let me hold on I wonder if I can add some volumetrics in here I don't know let me try so we'll go into render render properties so ideally I would play around with this a little bit more and have him banking I just can't seem to rotate him on that particular axis the way I brought him in so I would add a controller I think to adjust him that way and again if I loop this as an animation I can have him his arms actually moving so I'll try to do a video showing that as well. But this is the basic concept of it. And then if I go into render properties, we go into volumetrics. Ooh, holy cow. Let's see. Let's try. What does that do? I'm just trying to add like a, that's a little, just a little bit to, he looks pretty shiny there, but you notice how I add the volumetrics that it, it kind of, blends him in a little bit better to the environment so that's why I would do that. All I'm going to do now is I'm just going to render this out and it might not look the greatest but at least you get the idea of what I'm trying to do. So I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I will talk to you next time.